Alright guys, in this video, we are going to learn about two interesting and powerful APIs in Vue, namely provide and inject. Let's begin by understanding what was the need for the provide inject APIs and then understand how they work by writing some code. Consider a Vue application that has lots of components. We have app component, which is the root component. And nested within the app component at different levels are several other components. At the first level, we have components A, B, and C. Nested within component B is component D. Nested within component C is component E. And as it turns out, component F is nested inside component E. So we have three levels in total. The requirement in our application is that components A, D, and F are supposed to display the logged in username. That information is maintained as a property in the app component. We've recently learned about components and props. Props allow us to send data from a parent component to the child component. So, to display the username in the nested components, we need to pass down the username as a prop. For component A, it is pretty straightforward. Directly pass it in as props. For component D, however, we have the intermediate component B. So we have to pass down username as a prop to component B, and that component in turn has to pass down the prop to component D. Now the scenario is somewhat similar for component F as well. The prop has to be passed through component C and then component E and then finally to component F. Even though components B, C and E do not need the prop, we still have to send the prop through them to be able to pass it into components further down in the tree. Imagine if the components were to be nested 5 or 10 levels deep all the components in between would have to forward the prop. This especially becomes a problem for certain types of props such as language preference, UI theme and authenticated user which are pretty much required by many components in your application. What would be nice is if we could directly make the data available to the required component without having to manually drill down the props through every level of the component tree. This is where the provide and inject APIs come into picture. The two APIs provide a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass down props manually at every level. Let's understand this with the rightmost component tree you see on the screen. Let's provide the username value in app component and inject it in component F. There are two steps to implement when making use of provide and inject. Step 1. Provide the value in the app component. Step 2. Inject the value in component F. Let's head back to VS Code and implement these two steps. To get us started, I have already created the components and nested them at the appropriate level. In app component, we have component C. Within component C, we have component E. And finally, within component E, we have component F. Now, let us understand how to get data from the app component to component F using provide and inject. We already know how to create data that is used by the component template. We use the data option in the default export. As it turns out, we can specify another option called provide. This is an object. Here we define the properties that we want the child components to consume without having to pass it in as a prop. For our example, we just need to provide the username from app component to component F. So let's add username and set it to Vishwas. This is our step one. For step two, 
we head over to component F and specify or inject the username property in the default export. Similar to the props option that we have learned, inject is also an option on the default export. It's going to be an array with one property, which is the username property provided in the app component. We can now bind this username to the template using mustache syntax. I'll add an h3 tag, component f username, and bind username. If you save all the files and head to the browser, you should be able to see the text component f username vishwas. As you can see, even though component f is three levels nested inside the app component, we were able to consume values defined in the app component without having to drill down the value as a prop through each of the intermediate components. Now this works great, but we forgot to render the username in the app component as well. So let's head back to VS Code and in the app component, bind username to the template. App component username and bind it. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, to our surprise, we don't see the username from the app component template. We do see the text app component username, but the string Vishwas is not present. This is simply because inject does not allow you to bind the property to the template. To overcome this, we first need to define a username data property and then bind that value. So let me define a new data property called name and set it to Vishwas. Our username is going to be equal to this dot name. In the template, let's bind name instead of username. If you save the file and take a look at the browser, our app actually breaks with the error cannot read property name of undefined. To fix this, all we have to do is rewrite the provide option as a function that returns an object. So instead of colon, add parentheses. This is a function that returns an object. If you now take a look at the browser, we see Vishwas from both the app component as well as component F. So this is pretty much about the provide and inject APIs in Vue. They provide a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass props down manually at every level. If the property is utilized only further down in the component tree, you can specify provide as an object. If the data has to be used in the same component as well as components down the tree, specify provide as a function which returns an object. The object can then use data and computed properties defined in the providing component which can be consumed by components down the tree using the inject option. All right then, in the next video, let's talk about component events. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.